Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have some very important news this evening, a very interesting broadcast uh, for you. Uh, before I get into the broadcast, I want to just share with you, we have been offline for the last three days. Uh, several things have happened as a result. One, we were in an area where we had absolutely no signal, unable to broadcast at all. One of the reasons behind that and as well, uh, our daughter, Ariella, ended up in the hospital in London. Uh, we've been in a situation with no communication, not even our phones working in, in this part of the world here. Uh, it seems like the Czech phones only work in sh what we call Shagan areas in Europe. So it's made it very difficult to be able to be in touch with anyone. We have just now gotten internet uh, back once we got into London where we could broadcast, uh, like I said, only to run into the situation of our daughter ending up in the hospital. She does need your prayers, uh, and we thank you, those of you that support this news broadcast as well. We do need your help, uh, especially in light of the fact that we may be here for an extended period of time, something that we were not anticipating on this particular mission that we're on. Uh, anyway, let's go right on into the news here. I want to get into with you. Uh, we are going to be speaking about uh, in just a moment here, the Syrian war unfolds unexpected prophecies. This is a very serious prophetic news broadcast, something I think that you should be made aware of. Uh, and interesting uh, things that we're going to talk about here in just a moment here. Uh, before I do, I want to still bring to your attention, we mentioned in the broadcast a few days ago that there were uh, hundreds of police that were in Calais. Uh, we were expecting something to go down there. Things are not good. They will not let anyone pass uh, that is not a local that is living in the area there into the area where the Calais jungle is. We were stopped when we tried to enter in to be able to cover some of the uh, things that are going on. And then this morning, once I was able to get on the internet here, I ran across an article, and this here is on AOL News, Calais Jungle Refugees uh, Targeted by Armed Far-Right Militia in a Brutal Campaign of Violence. Uh, it, from what the article is stating here by AOL, uh, there, there are men that are coming in, some in uniform as reported by the refugees, some uh, just in plain clothes. Uh, they claim that they are fascists, they are militias, they are armed bandits as they have been called. Uh, they are rounding up refugees in the, by the van load, taking them out to a field, stripped naked, and then brutally beaten one by one as the others watch it. Uh, some of these young boys uh, under 18, 16 years of age, have suffered broken arms, uh, broken hands, everything you can imagine uh, from this brutality. I happen to question whether or not these armed uh, thugs, as it is, these bandits, uh, as they're calling them, uh, uh, far uh, right wing or left wing, whatever you want to call them, that are doing this, may not, in fact, actually be part of the police itself. How in the world, I question how in the world could these bandits get to the refugees when it is so heavily sealed off from every angle you can imagine. You don't just drive into the Calais jungle without having to go through a barrage of police, and those police will not let you through unless you live in that area. So I do question what is really going on. And of course, we're unable to get those answers as of yet. Uh, we will be trying to look into that more. Uh, real quick, though, I want to take take you right to uh, the other day when we did film uh, in London at the at Westminster, the Parliament. We did a short take there. Let me take you to that particular little broadcast that we did there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are here in London today. Came here for a special trip for a special purpose, and that purpose was actually to look at some of the ancient biblical documents. Uh, that are housed in the British Library. They were in the British Museum, and that is none other than the Sinai Codex, a very interesting uh, Bible. It's the oldest known copy of the Bible in the world, having more than 14,000 differences than the Bible that we read today. So we were able to come and see this for ourselves, something that was very important to us, as well as to view the Cyrus Cylinder that is actually in the British Museum. But the reason I'm here right now, while we stopped on this trip here, is we're in behind me is Westminster, the House of uh, Parliament, both Houses of Parliament, the British Parliament. And today they are actually debating climate change, global climate change. Another interesting thing to me is the fact that 
this is an ongoing issue around the world where you cannot help but wonder when these things are being debated here as to why they're being debated. Now, there's a lot of talk about Planet X. Planet X coming, uh, some believe, this year. Now, we don't ourselves, from the research we've been doing for the special broadcast that we're doing on Planet X, we're not of the opinion that it will actually pass this year. I still think it's a, a couple of years out. In fact, it looks more to me that it's going to pass as part of the biblical judgment that God brings upon the earth after the two witnesses are killed. So it may very well be that it's three and a half years out, closer to the 2020 time frame that many have suggested. It's another reason why also I believe that Pope Francis has talked about a window of retirement. He speaks in one place two to three years, in another place three to five years. And it's kind of odd that he does it that way. I think he's doing this because he's planning on going underground when Planet X does come. Something will be bringing more out to you in that special report. But another interesting thing about Britain, just like all the European Union states is, and that is that they have turned against Israel, also in favor of a Palestinian state. It's a very serious issue as all the world turns against Israel, God's chosen, God's elect people. Very serious times that we're living in, to say the least. I'm Stephen Benoon here in London, now back to the regular broadcast. You can see there, as we mentioned there, the, the, the world is against uh, uh, Israel the, uh, b being a, a state of its own. And uh, we can see all the world is turning against them. Now, we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast here that this is a prophetic uh, broadcast. And I want to bring that more of that to your attention here. The Syrian war, uh, war unfolds unexpected prophecies. Uh, some of those you may already be aware of. Some of them that you, you may not be aware of. Some we have shared with you. Some that have been brought to light. Uh, with the Jews that were returning from uh, Syria, from Aleppo, coming back to Israel. But I don't think people really realize the significance of some of these prophecies. One, Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Let me share that with you. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Now that is definitely speaking of what I consider to be uh, such a violent event that would happen on this earth uh, that even some have, are suggesting that this Planet X uh, may very well bring about those events. And that's a good possibility. If you go into verse 3 or 13 though, by the way though, those of you that are wanting to contribute to this broadcast, you can do that at either IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Uh, on IsraelReturns.com, if you prefer to send a check to our mailing address in Prague, you can do so. Uh, money orders don't work, unfortunately, but checks do. Uh, you could send that to us there, and uh, that's on IsraelReturns.com on our website there under Contacts, uh, or IsraeliNewsLive.org, we have a donation button there. Anyway, right into the broadcast, I don't want to waste time on this, Syrian war unfolds unexpectedly expected prophecies. And there's a lot of uh, prophecies here that people are just not anticipating that are happening as a result. Some of these we've already brought to your attention, but I thought it was very important we bring more of this out to you. In Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, gather yourselves together, ye gather together, uh, O nation, not desire, before the decree bring forth, before the day passes, the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Now, some might argue that the day, you know, that where it passes as a chaff, that this may have something to do with Planet X. And I think there could be a lot to do with that. Now, keep in mind, there has been some uh, question, why don't they know when this planet is really coming? Well, according to a Chilean astronomer that passed away back in 1999 that, that came out about Planet X, uh, I forget his name right off the top of my head there, but he said that it has an elliptical orbit like a comet with three different speeds that it travels at. I think that the astronomers are not really sure when it changes its speed and therefore it does give a window of uh, era of when it might appear. 
Some people think it's this year. I don't think it's this year personally. I think we're still a couple of years out, but uh, it is a very big window of margin there as a result of the changing of its speed. Uh, we are doing a special broadcast on that. It'll be a couple of weeks away, but, uh, but we will be very much looking forward to that. Uh, let's move right on into the other three verses, or two verses, uh, verse 3 and verse 4. To seek ye the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be that you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So there is a hiding away, or as some call it, a rapture, a catching away, but it's for the meek of the earth, those that are gentle, those that are kind, uh, long-suffering, you might add. As Jesus put it, in so much you do the least of uh, these my little ones, you do it unto me. Kind of makes you wonder about the meek of the earth. Verse 4 says, For Gaza shall be forsaken and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Akron shall be rooted up. I think, though, here in verse 4, the most important part of the scripture is Gaza shall be forsaken. Now, the funny thing is, out of all the Arabic world, Gaza really is forsaken by the rest of the Arab world. They don't really care about those, uh, uh, the, the Hamas terrorist group that lives in Gaza. Uh, even the Palestinians of the West Bank don't really care about Gaza. Neither does Hezbollah or any of the rest of them. Occasionally they talk about what they're suffering, but you never see anybody really come to Gaza's defense. So therefore, I think Gaza is truly forsaken by the Arabic community. But when you drop down to verse 13, this is a part that we really get into where we see prophecy unfolding before our eyes. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Now, we've been hearing a lot about how ISIS has taken over Aleppo. Aleppo, by the way, is right there on this, on where the river runs right through Aleppo and the ancient city of Nineveh. Even the tomb of Jonah was there. I say was there because we know back according to the news, uh, the tomb of Jonah was destroyed in Nineveh, as well as a lot of the wall that was uh, still there from the ancient city of Nineveh was destroyed also by uh, ISIS. Now, which is interesting because it says they will make Nineveh a desolation. So not only is it modern Nineveh, Nineveh becomes a desolation, but even the ancient biblical city of Nineveh is becoming a desolation. And not because that God brought judgment on the Ninevites who did repent in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, and by the way, they never had to kill any animals to do that. They repented. That's the only thing that Jonah required, God, or God required for Jonah was to tell them to repent or their city would be destroyed within 40 days. Well, they did just that. They did repent. Uh, now, on, uh, according to this particular article here that I pulled up, tragedy has as militants bombed 27-year-old Nineveh wall in Iraq. This came out on February 1st, 2015. Uh, it says militants of the Islamic State have destroyed a large portion of the ancient Nineveh wall in Mosul, which dates back some 2,700 years. The tragic loss adds to a series of archaeological, historical, and religious sites of great historical value that have been reduced to ruins. Remember what the prophecy said. Nineveh would become what? Let's take a look at that one more time. Nineveh becomes a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Well, it's become ruin, nothing but a pile of ruins. Uh, continuing on here, this is on firstthings.com. Uh, produced on uh, July the 28th of 2014, why did ISIS destroy the tomb of Jonah? On Friday, the media reported that ISIS, the Islamic group that has established a caliphate in parts of Syria and Iraq, had destroyed the centuries-old tomb of Jonah in Mosul, Iraq. Present-day Mosul encompasses the site of the ancient Assyrian capital of Nineveh. Uh, where the Bible teaches the prophet Jonah preached, although th that is uh, disputed, a tradition holds that Jonah was buried within the city on Tel Neba, uh, Yunus, or a hill of the prophet of Jonah. And again, like they even state there, it is a disputed area whether or not, but if you look at the biblical account, it says it was a three days journey from where he got off the ship there, up there north of Israel, possibly on the, uh, on the little part that is known as Syria now that comes out of the Gulf of Aqaba, or even in Lebanon, perhaps. 
uh, comes out on the Mediterranean, not the Gulf of Aqua, but comes out on the Mediterranean. So there is a good uh, possibility that this is the ancient city of Nineveh if Jonah had a three-day journey to get there. Um, but anyway, so the tomb of Jonah was totally destroyed by uh, this particular armed group. Now, in light of all of these things that are going on, there's been many, many, many uh, uh, things that have been happening, uh, biblically speaking as well, and I want to share that with you. Let's take a look. We're going to go into the book of Joel next. Now, there's something I want to share with you guys, and we're going to kind of go through a whirlwind of passages uh, in this scripture that are being fulfilled. This is something, though, that uh, I believe was revealed not long ago, and I believe even the, the scriptural connection was revealed as well, so it's not like I'm revealing something new. But I am going to speak to you about a prophecy that's being fulfilled uh, in a way maybe that a lot of people have not connected the dots in this case here. And that's from the passages, uh, the passage of Isaiah 27, when it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, maybe I should read the, the verse above it, verse 12, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and you shall gather one by one, you children of Israel. All right, these are the Jews that are coming back to their homeland, the children of Israel. Now, it's interesting that he says the children of Israel. This is not the house of Judah. And even in Israel, they're looking at new laws to allow the, the house of Israel to come home, especially those Jews from Spain and those areas there, from the, the Sephardic Jews, which my own father's family is a Sephardic Jew from that area, that uh, are now no longer practicing Judaism. They're Christians because of the inquisition of the Catholic Church. Many of them, they converted to Christianity by force. Uh, going into verse 13, though, And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcast, and the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Now, there is, could be some debate as to whether or not this is being fulfilled at this moment, but I would have to argue that in a type of this, it is being fulfilled. So we are seeing the great trumpet being blown. Now, I do think that there is a compound meaning in that. I believe there is the greater trumpet where Israel, uh, it'll be part of the millennial reign that this is fulfilling in. But we also must consider, too, where we have the, uh, the, the uh, back in November of last year, where the Jewish family, the last Jewish family of the Syria or the uh, or Assyria, the ancient kingdom, was actually rescued. The last known Jews of that region and were brought home to Israel. And in, our, in an article by the Jewish Chronicle Online revealed how the last Jews of Aleppo escaped. Uh, they do an in-depth article about an 80-year-old woman who knew of them. Uh, were were the powerful knocks on the front door and a sound sent her and the rest of, of the Halabi family covering in the darkest corners of their Aleppo home. Uh, she was sure that Bashar al-Assad had come for them as, uh, uh, as the three men entered the house. The men shouted that they were being taken away. They were actually being rescued by uh, Jewish uh, secret uh, Mossad agents there and taken back to Israel. Uh, very, very uh, incredible thing that took place, but also very prophetic, to say the least there. Now, moving from that point there, I want to take you into the book of Nahum and share with you a few more prophecies there in the book of Nahum, because the book of Nahum uh, really gives us a very interesting look and in more prophecies that are being fulfilled as we speak even in this day here. Uh, going to verse 8, it says, But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water. Yet they shall flee away. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Take you the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold, for there is no end of the store and glory of all the pleasant furniture. She is empty and void and waste, and the heart melteth, and the knees smite together, and much pain is like, excuse me, as in all loins and faces of them all gather blackness. 
This is exactly what has taken place already. This prophecy has already been fulfilled because as ISIS went into this ancient city, they drove out the occupants, they ransacked, robbed all of the treasures of Nineveh and as, and as well of uh, Mosul, which is the bordering city. I actually made a mistake earlier when I said Aleppo is actually Mosul. Uh, they took everything from this particular area and they took it and sold it on the black market. It's been sold in Britain. It's been sold in Egypt. All over the world, these, these, these artifacts have been sold by, quote unquote, ISIS. And these people that live there have been driven out, as the Bible says, uh, watch the, uh, excuse me, going back to verse 8 there, it says, uh, this is what's interesting. Nineveh is old like a pool of water. So it shows that it was for a future day, not back during the time of Nineveh when Jonah came, but when Nineveh was an ancient, it would become old like a pool of water. Water's been around on the earth for thousands and thousands and even before civilization. This is why the, 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 the type is put there by the prophet of Nahum that it's old like a pool of water, yet they shall flee away and stand. Stand shall they cry, but none shall look back because they're not going home. And there's another prophecy that deals with that as well. Let's move on to Nahum chapter uh, 3. And this is where some more of the prophecies come into place right here, going down to verse 7. And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforts for thee? Art thou better than Populous, know that was uh, situate uh, among the rivers that lay the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea. See, Nineveh, again, becoming totally desolate by those that are, that are around it. And you drop down to verse 18 uh, in the book of Nahum, where it says, Thy shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria, thy nobles shall dwell in the dust. Thy people is scattered upon the mountains and no man gathereth them. So the refugees, and by the way, this was part of the empire of Assyria, which encompassed the modern day Syria, as well as part of uh, Northwest Iraq. So as a whole, the Syrian people or the Assyrians have been sent into exile. They're refugees today. They've been scattered across the entire face of the globe. And they're not going home. As much as some speak about they would rather go back to Syria than be in the lands that they are now, they're not going back, to say the least. Let's take a quick look at the book of Joel, and then we'll be concluding our broadcast here. Uh, but I'd like to take you to Joel chapter 2. There's several parts in here that you should see. Uh, we, we did this at the beginning of the broadcast, blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now, notice, blow ye a trumpet in Zion. Now, it's already mentions of the great trumpet that's mentioned over in the book of Isaiah 27, that great trumpet that sounded, that brought home what? Those remaining Jews that were in Assyria. And they have already been brought home. They are now back from Assyria. All right. So we see that scripture is fulfilled. Now we see that the trumpet in Zion is to be sound the alarm. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness is among is the morning spread upon the mountains of great people and strong. There hath not been ever the light, neither shall there be any more after it. For the years of many generations, a fire devoureth before them, behind them a flame burneth in the land as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yet, yea, and nothing shall escape them. Which army? is this referring to when we're looking at the biblical scene right now? Now, we see that Russia's in there doing a bombing and campaign against ISIS, but I don't think Russia is nothing compared to what's going to happen as NATO is building this coalition right now to do an invasion on Syria with the Saudis, the, uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, you got Bahrain involved in this, the United States. Great Britain has brought troops into Jordan. The United States has brought in extra troops for a ground assault and invasion there. It is going to take and turn a place that once looked like the Garden of Eden into a, a nothing but a, a, 
a, a dunghill. It'll become a ruinous heap. This is one of the reasons why the scripture of Damascus is referring to the way it does. It will be a ruinous heap. Friends, we are, we are in a very serious time. Let me drop down in this. Uh, I actually had this in my, uh, uh, in my uh, PowerPoint presentation, but because of our difficulties right now on the road here, uh, that we are having. I was unable to share that with you, so I won't be able to share with you the photos or, or the uh, scriptures, uh, especially with Ariella being in the hospital. We'll have to get back there, so we're just going to have to load this the way it is. So please look these scriptures up, play the video back. It's very important that you see all of this in here. Uh, let's drop down to verse 13. It says, Rend your heart and not your garments and turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, uh, even a, a food offering and a drink offering uh, unto the Lord your God. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. By the way, I believe you have meat offering in there. Uh, in the King James Version there, but uh, as far as the, the Hebraic uh, version of this, um, and let me just real quick pull that up for you so you're aware of this right here. Uh, it, is, it is an oblation. Uh, it, is, uh, it, it does not mean uh, physical flesh, and I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, real quick, going back again, though. Here's, here's the important part of this, though, that I want to bring out. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, and call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. Give not thy heritage to reproach and the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Friends, if there's ever a time that you've cried out for the children of Israel, this is that time. When this war breaks out with NATO-led forces, Russia there, Iran, all of Israel's enemies are going to be on her borders. Kind of like the little uh, brother, brother Nathan, that showed the prophecy there. There would be a war that would last about two weeks between the United States and Russia. Then after that, they would make a peace, but then they would all turn on Israel. Friends, this is a time to really be weeping and praying for Israel's safety. This is a time for, for praying out and asking God to remember them, that he forget not his promise, that they say, where is the God of Israel? I think their only hope is the two witnesses. It's the only hope of the entire world, it seems. So many ideas, so many different doctrinal opinions. It's very serious. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Keep our family in prayer here in Europe. Visit us on our website, israelinewslive.org. And please be praying for us. Uh, we'll be trying to get back to our office to bring much deeper information to you that we have discovered on this trip. Our main purpose for this trip was to gather information we have gathered troves of information for you that we'll be sharing with you in the next weeks and months to come. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.